Item number, SCP-353. Object class, Keter. Special containment procedures. Biological hazard protocol is to be maintained at all times. Biohazard threat level four. Full hazardous material suits, gloves, and oxygen supply will be required to examine subject. A disinfectant shower and decontamination spray are standard procedure before and after contact with SCP-353. The whole containment unit is to be kept underground, at negative pressure, and hermetically sealed at all times to prevent accidental contamination to the outside area. In the case of containment breach, all affected personnel are to be placed in immediate biohazard level 4 quarantine. Termination will be required in the possibility of an outbreak of one or more class 9 infectious agents. Subjects should be fed three times a day, as standard, and provided with the minimum required comfort items. A twin-size bed, a pillow, and a blanket. Clothing in the form of disposable surgical scrubs are to be provided as needed, but requests for items should otherwise be denied. Any outward signs of disease in the subject, such as rashes, boils, vomiting, or sickly pallor or demeanor, should be reported with haste. Since the appearance of symptoms in SCP-353 means a willful effort on her part, subject is to be subdued and questioned. Should SCP-353 need to leave its containment facility for any reason, it is to be fitted with an explosive collar, time-release drug delivery service, for dosages of euphoric substances, and biohazard containment suit. Should SCP-353's suit breach containment, emergency sterilization procedures, up to and including incineration of the affected area, are to be carried out. Description SCP-353 appears to be a normal human female, 26 years old, of average physical capacity and average intelligence. Subject has the capacity to siphon infectious viral and bacterial agents from her environment, nurture and store them within her body, and then redistribute them to devastating pandemic effect. SCP-353's mood directly affects the radius of infections recorded, with increased emotional states leading to massively increased potency. SCP-353 seems to be immune from the symptoms of said infectious agents, but just as long as she is only passively storing them, her active, willful attempts to nurture, manipulate, and change infectious agents while they remain in her body cause her to manifest symptoms, ranging from mildly annoying to severe. Symptoms only last as long as she is actively inducing a change in the quantity or quality of an infectious agent, and thus rarely last longer than a few hours. Examinations have shown that the subject is able to store almost any infectious bacterial or viral agents within her body though she is only capable of changing agents that are able to naturally survive within the human body. As of writing this report, SCP-353's blood contains traces of over 1,000 different infectious agents, including human immunodeficiency virus, or HIV, Ebola, Marburg, 67 different strains of the common cold, herpes simplex A, E. coli, cholera, bubonic plague, SARS, and malaria. At least 30% of said infectious agents were previously unknown to the medical community and were possibly engineered by SCP-353 herself, making SCP-353 an invaluable resource. Addendum 3531 SCP-353 was originally encountered in Data Expunged, South Africa where she seemed to be deliberately seeking to pick up strains of the Ebola virus. Foundation personnel pursued SCP-353 to Dresden, Germany, where they determined that she had successfully contracted Marburg and redistributed said virus to data expunged. Subject was eventually subdued by physical means and taken into Foundation custody with minimal loss of life. To date, her true identity is unknown, as she gives no name other than Vector and refuses to answer any questions about her past. SCP-353 claims to have traveled the Western world seeking greater infections for her collection. When asked why, she would not give a response aside from, because I can. Addendum 
3532. Initial testing has shown that she is as adept at manipulating and changing infectious agents in the bodies of nearby subjects as she is at manipulating them within her own body. She seems to prefer to manipulate diseases within her own body, however, as it grants her full access to the results of her manipulations. Furthermore, her ability to manipulate disease in nearby subjects means it's likely that she is equally capable of curing diseases and dispensing them. On a different note, personnel are reminded to refer to humanoid SCPs by their numerical SCP designation. Should SCP-353 refuse to cooperate, she is to be subdued and punished. We're not here to make her X-Men villain fantasies come true. Dr. Sarah Jarvi. Addendum 3533. Given that this girl is a walking time bomb of viruses, I recommend that we trank her, strap her to a table, and give her a massive dose of ribavirin interferon cocktail to flush her system. Dr. Addendum 3534. Flush her system? Hell no! Did you know that this girl somehow has the original strain of the 1918 Spanish flu? As well as a half dozen strains of viruses we've never seen. The research possibilities alone. Dr. Addendum 3535. Limited research approved. 05. Addendum 3536. The embrace of this vector persona, including the fixation on the color black for cosmetic purposes, her might makes right attitude, her desire to infect rather than to cure, and her disregard for human life all signal towards extreme malignant narcissism and psychopathic tendencies. Her obvious pleasure in manipulating and controlling diseases within herself despite the often painful symptoms involved are also quite troubling. Requesting approval for psychological examination. Counseling or therapy may be useful in reducing her difficult demeanor. Dr. Glass. Lesson complete. If you missed the previous orientation, go watch SCP-352, Baba Yaga, right now. Or for the complete course, watch this playlist.